Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing synaptic tagmin. Okay, so so far what we've done is we've seen that the structure of synaptic tagmin is that it has a membrane spanning portion, which is an alpha helix, and then the cytoplasmic domain of cy uh, synaptic tagmin has these two C2 domains, uh, the C2A and the C2B. Now, I'm now to, in the process of discussing with you what a C2 domain actually is. And it's often described, basically, as a beta sandwich. So, so far what I've done is I've talked about what a beta pleated sheet is. It's one of these planar sheets of uh, that polypeptides can form, where they form hydrogen bonds between uh, the amide groups or the peptide links on uh, parallel polypeptide strands. Okay, so now what I want to talk about is what a, a beta sandwich actually is. And a beta sandwich basically is two beta pleated sheets stacked on top of one another. So let me get another piece of paper. Okay, so what you can do is you can form um, two beta pleated sheets, each composed of uh, four strands. So here are four strands here. So that makes up one of these beta pleated sheets. So let me um, highlight it in blue. So this is a beta pleated sheet. Okay, so it's four strands of the polypeptide that are all in parallel to make a sheet. And then there's going to be another one of these sheets, again with four strands. So here are those four strands that are in parallel. And this is another one of these beta pleated sheets. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to stack those two sheets on top of one another. Okay, so um, if I draw this in 3D, here is one of these sheets. And then stacked on top of it is going to be this other one here. So that is why it's called a beta sandwich. Okay, so here in red is this top one, which represents this one with these four parallel strands making up uh, the beta pleated sheet. And then underneath it, we have another beta pleated sheet, which is here in blue. Okay, and together they make up this beta sandwich. And this is what a C2 domain is. It's basically these two beta pleated sheets stacked on top of one another to make a beta sandwich. And calcium ions are capable of binding in between these uh, two layers of the beta sandwich, basically. Now, it would be lovely if the structure, the way that these um, the way that these parallel strands were connected was simple. Unfortunately, it's not. Basically, you start off with the amino terminus here. So here's the amino terminus of the polypeptide. Then what happens is this then folds round to form this strand here. And then this strand connects onto this one over here. So basically the structure by which you actually fold a polypeptide into these two, um, two beta pleated sheets is not simple. And now I'm showing you how the polypeptide actually flows between these two. Feel free to turn off at this point. Okay, then this one connects onto this next one here. Okay, and this one then goes back over onto the other beta pleated sheet, which is this one here. Okay, and then finally this one goes back over one more time to this one here, and then this one connects onto this one, and then finally, actually here's the final one, it connects back up to this one, and here's the carboxyl terminus of the polypeptide. So that's actually how you make these uh, beta, these two beta pleated sheets uh, that form the beta sandwich in a C2 domain. So this is the C2 domain. Okay, and this is basically the polypeptide folded into this structure. And you can bind calcium ions in between these two uh, beta pleated sheets that are stacked on top of one another in this beta sandwich. And that's how these C2 domains can uh, bind to um, calcium, basically. So we have two of these in synaptotagmin. We have this C2A domain and this C2B domain. So let me remind you again. So here's the vesicle, let's say, here, then the structure of synaptotagmin is we have this membrane spanning alpha helix, then we have these two C2 domains, so these are both uh, beta sandwiches, they're these uh, eight strands.
strands folded into two beta pleated sheets which are stacked on top of each other. Okay, so this is C2A and C2B. And then in between the two, you have this nine amino acid linker. And amino acids are often just denoted alpha alpha for short. That means amino acid linker here. Okay, so let me colour this in. So this is the synapse tagmin molecule here. The, this is the membrane spanning alpha helix and these two, um, these two uh, C2 domains here. All right, okay. The final thing I want to then tell you about is the most crude experiments that you can do which show that synaptotagmin is incredibly important in, um, in neurotransmission, in releasing neurotransmitter, and those are knockout experiments. So, in a knockout experiment, what you do is you delete the gene for synaptotagmin. So let's say we delete the gene for synaptotagmin 1, okay, and we see what happens to the organism. Now, these sort of knockout experiments, okay, for a long time, they've been done in flies, okay, so they've been done in Drosophila, which is a species of fruit fly. Now, Drosophila are very good uh, for doing this, because firstly, you have to have a pretty hardcore anti-vivisectionist to campaign against the use of flies, um, and also because they breed so quickly. Um, so they've been we've used them for genetic experiments for many years, and if you knock um, if you knock synaptotagmin one out in Drosophila, you're going to see a reduced neurotransmission. We also do it uh, in a species known as. Canorab, canorabditis, canorabditis, okay, so let me write this down, canorabditis, canorabditis, rabditis, so if you um, type in on Google this, you'll probably get a better pronunciation than it of me, uh, canorabditis, uh, and then it's elegans, often just abbreviated to C. elegans, okay, so this is C. elegans in brackets here. Okay, but in full, its name is Canorabditis elegans, okay, uh, or Canary or Rabditis, it might be Cenorabditis, Cino, I think it's, that's how you pronounce it, Cenorabditis, okay, Cenorabditis elegans, okay, you can also, oh, right, I haven't told you what Cenorabditis elegans actually is, it's a species of worm, C. elegans, again, um, they breed nice and quickly, and again, there's very few people who will campaign against you doing experiments on worms. You can also do knockout experiments on mice now, so we uh, often now, uh, when we want to do knockout experiments, we can do them on mice now. And finally, the other species that we often do knockout experiments in, specifically when we're looking at uh, neurotransmission, is we use aplesia. Aplesia, which is basically a, a species of sea snare, a sea slug rather, okay, and the reason that they're often used in experiments on uh, nerves in, or, or neurotransmission is because they have very large axon terminals, so uh, that makes it easier to do experiments with those. If, any, if anything's bigger, then it's easier to do an experiment with it generally. Okay, so aplesia is um, the other creature that we can use uh, for these sorts of experiments. And if you knock out synaptotagmin 1, what you find is that neurotransmission is hugely reduced, basically. So that toll tells us that synaptotagmin 1 is important in the release of neurotransmitter from axon terminals. That's a very crude experiment. We're going to describe a lot more advanced experiments when we're trying to actually uh, figure out what the um, function of synaptotagmin 1 in neurotransmission transmission is.